G'day and welcome to another midweek episode on Grizzly and Bear Overland. My name's Lee and together with my wife Steffi, we've been driving around the world now for five years in our Land Rover Defender and four-wheel camper. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about raised air intakes or snorkels as they're more commonly known. I'll be covering a few topics today such as do you really need a snorkel? What are they for? and why did we choose the make and model that we have on our Land Rover Defender? Do you really need a raised air intake or snorkel on your overland or off-road vehicle? In order to answer that question, we need to talk about what they are actually for. Now, to be absolutely honest with you, I don't really like the term snorkel. I much prefer raised air intake. Now, the reason I say that is, at a guess, I would say that 90% of the vehicles you see on the road with a raised air intake have never had their engine so fully submersed in water that it is actually being used as a snorkel. Now I absolutely include myself in that 90%. We are overlanders, not off-roaders, as I've mentioned many times before. In fact, I use the top of my tires as a gauge for safe water depth crossings. Anything deeper than that, and I'll be seriously reconsidering the need to cross at that point or looking for an alternative route. Our vehicle is also our full-time home and we'll never take unnecessary risks that could cause serious damage. So is our raised air intake just for show if I never intend to go swimming with my vehicle? Now, as the name suggests, we installed our raised air intake in order to have the engine's air intake above the majority of the dust, debris and dirt levels on most tracks and trails. This air intake was never installed because we plan to take our vehicle through water crossings that would see the engine completely submersed. So do you really need one? No, of course not. But I do believe a raised air intake to be a beneficial piece of kit if, like us, you spend a lot of time on dirt and gravel roads. If your four-wheel drive has never travelled on an unsealed road and you have no intention of doing so, then possibly you don't need one. Our raised air intake is made by a German company called Nakatenenga. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I believe this type to be one of the best on the market. It's different to the common safari type raised intakes in several ways. Firstly, the air intake is not forward facing, but underneath, which means far less chance of bugs and debris entering. This design also incorporates a pre-filter. The mushroom type dome on the top is a cyclonic type dust collector. The air enters from the bottom, spins around with any dust and dirt particles hitting the sides and dropping. Only the clean air makes it into the 80 millimeter aluminum intake pipe. We empty the catchment can periodically and it's quite amazing to see the amount of dirt, dust and debris that's caught in here. All of these particles would have entered a normal forward facing raised air intake and reached your engine's air filter. By incorporating this pre-filter or catchment in our system, we most definitely prolong the lifespan of our engine's main air filter. This in turn keeps your engine's air filter cleaner for longer and therefore produces a more efficiently running engine. For all the fellow Land Rover Defender owners, as you may or may not have noticed, we have modified where the air intake enters the engine bay. From the factory, this is actually the heater blower air intake and the normal air intake enters from the side. We modified these and swapped them around to more easily route the 80 millimeter straight through pipe that comes from our raised air intake. Another modification we made was to cut out the baffles in the air box that are usually here. This meant less restrictions on the airflow to the engine and has been proven to increase efficiency and performance. Let's talk about a few of the benefits of a raised air intake. The air intake to your engine is raised significantly higher than standard. This enables it to pull cleaner air above the majority of dust and debris levels. Our raised air intake acts as a pre-filter, enabling it to catch most larger pollutants before they hit the main filter. Our intake minimizes water ingress by having the air intake below rather than forward facing. It's super easy to install and other than having to empty the catchment can every now and then, the system is completely maintenance free. If installed correctly and made 100% watertight, a raised air intake 
can allow your engine to be completely submerged in water. We'll be leaving these water crossings to the braver, more hardcore off-roaders unless we are left with absolutely no other choice. As far as negatives, I can't really think of any other than the install and purchase cost. In summary, I would recommend a raised air intake on any overland or off-road build if you're planning long distances on unsealed roads. If you are on a budget, then definitely don't make this a priority item. You can always add one later if you think you need it. I will throw a link to our Nakatenenga raised air intake in the description. We've got absolutely no affiliation with this company, but as always, we are very happy to recommend what we believe to be good quality products. Thanks heaps for watching this video. Please do leave a comment if you've got anything to add on this topic. Maybe share some stories of some wild water crossings you've experienced in your lifetime. As always, a huge shout out to all of our patrons that make these videos possible. We couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you. Cheers and we'll catch you next time.